Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our first lesson for this course, Platform Technology. For this discussion, we are going to talk about the basic or the definition of platform technology and we will be focusing on the first topic that is uh, comprising what is or what are the platform technologies. So before I proceed to the presentation, please watch this video clip that is trying to explain how the operating system works. Computers are used for so many different tasks. Playing games. Watching videos. Running calculations. Communicating and collaborating. Computers today are a mixture of different types of hardware and software. But there is one program that brings them all together, and that's the operating system. To consider what the operating system is, let's go back in time to the invention of digital computers. They could handle around 5,000 complex calculations per second. Impressive for the time. But today's supercomputers perform nearly 34 trillion calculations per second. Programs were written on punch cards, pieces of cardboard with holes. These were fed one at a time into the central processing unit, or CPU, and enabled the earliest form of computer batch processing. In some cases, one person was in charge of making sure the cards were fed in correctly. Their job was to correct jams and schedule when the next program could be run. As computers became faster, they were able to process punch card tasks quicker than the cards could be fed in. There was another problem. Different computers' resources, that is, the components within them, such as RAM, and the devices attached to them, such as printers, were all different from one another. A programmer had to write very different types of programs specific to the machine it would be running on. Was it this card? Or that card? Oh no, it's all getting a bit complicated, isn't it? The solution was to write a brilliant piece of software called an operating system, or OS. The OS would take over the tasks common to many programs. Today, operating systems control the hardware of the computer. They manage and allocate resources and provide an interface for the user. Go on then, turn on that computer and we'll see what happens. An OS is one of the first programs that runs when a computer is turned on. Most programs start the same way. The computer issues lines of code as commands to prepare all the important elements, like the screen and the network. The operating system holds the collection of all the common commands and segments them, rather like putting them into a library, from which the other regular programs can borrow codes. Is a group of technologies that are used as base upon which other application processes or technologies are developed so meaning platform is considered as the foundation of all the development of technology so in personal computing a platform is the basic hardware or the computer and the software or operating system in which software application can be run so the platform or the foundation of developing a technology or any application would be the foundation 
okay that is a platform so when we talk about platform technology that is the foundation of all development when it comes to computing so it talks about hardware which is our computer and our software which is the operating system because the operating system is playing a special role in the process of computer operation so platform standard so platform conforms to a set of standard that enables software developers to develop software application for the platform so it means to say that the platform conforms to the different standards to a set of standards that is enabling developers or programmers to develop their application for a particular platform so there are softwares developed that are compatible to any platform when you say any platform it could work with cross platform it could work with this platform for windows or another platform which is the linux that is just a basic example of a platform standard thus to run a bookkeeping program on a computer you must purchase a bookkeeping software application that was developed for the platform in which it will be used no that is talking about the compatibility compatibility is a separate example if you are going to install a certain program or application platform is the most important consideration whether that program that you are trying to install is supported with the platform with your device let's say for example your computer or your cell phone itself so multiple platforms multiple platforms or oh, these are the new standard based interfaces and open source interfaces allow application program to run on multiple platforms additionally software developers have developed software tools that allow application to run on multiple platforms so this is what i am talking about cross platform or this will work with different platforms so that all of the necessary or that is depending on the need of the end user let's say for example the availability of the device or the hardware so if this application is only intended for this particular platform so meaning there is a limitation when it comes to the installation or utilization of that system so it is uh, advantageous if the system that you are going to develop is working with multiple platforms cross-platform software and multi-platform software okay cross-platform and multi-platform -plat software this has given the rise to the term cross-platform software and multi-platform software so a classic example is represented by video games developed specifically for a certain platform in case a console such as PlayStation or Xbox no so talk about cross-platform let's say for example Java Java has the this platform or this programming language that you're going to store to install in your system can work with either different operating system since operating system is considered as a platform so cross-platform it will work with Linux and it will work with uh, Windows so meaning there is no issue on the compatibility or multi-platform which means multiple platform software that this application or this software will be working with so in here this is a figure that uh, talks about the technology platform so we have here operating system 
we have computing platforms, we have da database platforms, storage, application, mobile, web, content management, media, and so on. So these are the different technology platforms, which is the basis of making your device functioning. All right. So since the first topic is operating system, so we are going to talk about what is an operating system. Okay. So objective for this discussion will give a grand tour of the major operating system components. So we'll be talking about the different components of an operating system. Provide coverage of basic computer system organization and instill the importance of operating system. How important is your operating system in a particular device? So what is an operating system? So an operating system, uh, this is not new for you because we, I know that uh, you have the knowledge of what is an operating system and what are the different operating system that you encounter or what are the operating system that you encounter okay so a program that acts as an intermediary between a user of a computer and a computer hardware so when we talk about operating system it talks about intermediary so it is trying to mediate the communication of the user to the computer hardware because as we all know that the computer system will not work in the absence of the user and in the absence of the hardware at the same time the most important is the operating system okay the operating system goals are the following execute user programs and make solving user problem easier okay execute user program so the operating system is the one that is trying to facilitate the request of the end user through the use of the graphical user interface and that will facilitate the communication to our hardware that is to perform what are those instructions that you wanted to happen next is make the computer system convenient to use okay when you say convenient it would be easy to use for the user that is why an operating system offers a very good graphical user interface for us to utilize the different application the different process in our system it may be using your cell phone or it may be using your computer that is why you have different icons okay make or use the computer hardware in an efficient manner of course with the help of the operating system at the present that would be efficient for us okay using the hardware computer so OS is a resource allocator the operating system is a resource allocator okay the OS is also a control program so what we talk about resource allocator what is resource allocation allocator meaning that that is the one who allocates so the OS is the one who allocates what okay resource allocation simply means assigning your resources okay assigning your resources time people and tools across various tasks in the project to work towards deadlines so that is the definition of resource allocation when we talk about uh, people but when we talk about computer or device but when we talk about computer operating system 
is serving as resource allocator okay so what are the functions of an operating system that serves as resource allocator so these are the steps get to know your resources getting to know your resources then operating system is actually before starting the process it makes sure that everything any device that are connected are functional so that is getting to know the resources what are the different peripherals and what are the internal connections of the computer system that are installed are in good condition okay then follow the scope the next is map out the plan resist the urge to over allocate then track and manage time use tools to make workload manage management easier okay so you know, say the operating system is actually systematic when it comes to the instruction so the user are actually fond of clicking giving instruction to the computer all us all of the instruction are actually labeled and placed that in a particular counter okay then all of the instruction will not overlap okay then uh, systematic the process is systematic so that is why there is a time management time management using the clock of the system that every time the clock ticks that the process will move one at a time okay but only the process uh, will be executed in just the blink of an eye just a second control program a program that enhances an operating system by creating an environment which you can run other programs control program programs generally provide a graphical interface and enable you to run several programs at once in different windows okay control program that is the one that is try to control the processes inside the computer okay so in your computer you can run several programs at the same time okay you can run several programs at the same time that is controlled by a particular um, process or a function of an operating system that facilitate multiple programming that will be run running in your system so computer system structure so computer system can be divided into four components so what comprises the computer system to make it functional one is hardware the hardware are the tangible parts of the computer or any devices it provides basic computing resources next is operating system as we all know that operating system has a big role in the process which this is the one that is trying to facilitate the communication between your software applications and the hardware right so that is the role of an operating system intermediary so application programs that is the third component application program defines the ways in which system resources are used to solve the computing problems of the user so as we all know application programs are referring to the programs that we are using as the end user we are trying to install programs for a specific function let's say for example microsoft office that is one of the example of the application program okay we wanted to to edit videos so we're going to install another set of application program we wanted to edit pictures and others those are application programs that are installed in our system which is trying to solve 
our computing problems. Okay, and the last is the user. User is very important in a system because in the absence of the user, the computer is nothing. It will not function because user will be responsible of handling the system. Turning on, checking of errors, installa installation, installing the applications and other. So that is the role of the user. So these are the figure or this is the figure of the components of a computer system. So we have here the first level is the user user that the next level that talks about the compiler assembler the text editor and the database system and so on and so forth All right so it talks about the system and the application program okay the system and the application program because as we all know that our data will not be processed without the use of the application program and our data will not be processed in the absence of the system okay in the absence of system the next is the operating system so an operating system falls on the third layer which is trying to which is placed in between the application program and the computer hardware Okay, it is placed in between because when you turn on the computer, the first one that will be invoked or the first one that will be checking everything is the operating system. Okay, so it will check the computer hardware whether the hardware are properly installed in the system. It will check any applications running. So that's the function of the operating system. So operating system definition has no universal accepted definition. Okay, everything a vendor ships bit or when you order an operating system is good approximation. So the one program running at all times on the computer is the kernel. Okay, the kernel is the one that is supervising the process. Okay. That is the one who is supervising the process on which is found at the top level of the components of an operating system. Everything else is either a system program, ships the operating system, or an application program. Okay, you know what's the difference between an application program and a system program? So a system program or a system software or software that is belongs to the operating system and the application softwares are the application that is trying to manipulate our data to solve a particular problem so computer startup when you are going to turn on your computer that is what you call booting okay booting boot that is coming from the word boot booting is an action all right an action of turning on your computer and checking all of the functions of the hardware and your software inside. Okay, Bootstrap program is loaded at power up or reboot. Okay, so Bootstrap program, the Bootstrap program that is actually stored in the room in the read-only memory, which is permanently burn that into the chip okay which when you turn on the computer it will go directly to the bootstrap program okay in the master boot record so typically stored in the read only memory or the ep room generally known as the firmware firmware that is actually a program that is actually stored in the hardware so initializes all aspects of the system. It loads operating system kernel and starts the ex execution. All right. So 
A bootstrap program is the first code that is executed when the computer system is started. So, have you noticed that when you turn on your computer, you could see text running on your monitor? That is a bootstrap program that is trying to check everything that is placed inside whether some or most or all of the components that are installed inside are functioning all right so bootstrap in the figure here the bootstrap read by the operating system okay so the operating system in the second layer will facilitate then after that we'll have to start the device drivers okay the device driver are actually the software or the firmware that is actually paired with your hardware that you are when you install your hardware device driver are also installed to your system so that is actually in the bootstrap program belongs okay so let's say for example uh, your mouse your keyboard when you are going to pull that out then you are going to turn on your computer the operating system through the bootstrap program will have to tell you okay, your computer uh, detects that I, your USB or your mouse or your keyboard was not successful, was not connected to your system. So that is the role of the bootstrap program. So bootstrapping process does not require any outside input to start. Okay, Any software can be loaded as required by the operating system rather than loading all software automatically so not all of the software will be loaded automatically but it is only selected softwares which is required by the operating system okay one example of that is are the, the firmware or the drivers that are installed in the computer system so benefit of bootstrapping so without bootstrapping, the computer user would have to download all the software components, including the ones not frequently required. So with bootstrapping, only those software components need to be downloaded that are legitimately required and all extraneous components are not required. So only those very important softwares installed in your computer will be loaded that is the function of bootstrapping so computer system organization computer system organization or computer system operation so one or more cpu device controller connects through common bus providing access to shared memory so concurrent execution of cpu and devices completing for memory cycle as we all know that the completion of execution of instruction that is what you call machine cycle all right so in here these are the different devices and different devices have also a controller okay a controller which whatever uh, processes here or whatever queries from the user that would be controlled by the different controllers here okay usb controllers so let's say for example for the mouse the keyboard the printer there are controllers that is helping to facilitate the different action of the end user so they are the ones trying to control it. Then the graphics adapter that is for monitor. Then these lines are actually referring to the bus. A bus is actually a, a line or the passage where the data is or the data or instruction that is 
passing from and to different components of the computer and the, here is uh, the memory where the memory is actually holding the instructions the data and instructions to be processed by the processor so computer system operation IO devices and CPU can execute concurrently or they will be executing in parallel okay they can work together they can execute the the process in a parallel process okay each device controller is in charge of a particular device type so every device has its own device controller each device controller has a local buffer so cpu moves data from and to main memory and from or to from to and from local buffers okay so the io is from the device to local buffers to the controller so this shows the operation of the computer system from one from one component to another how they process and pass the data or instruction up to finishing the instruction process okay what does interrupt mean an interrupt is a function of an operating system that provides multi-process multitasking okay an interrupt an interrupt is a signal that prompts the operating system to stop work on one process and start would work on another process okay an interrupt is serving as a traffic facilitator of the execution or the processing of information so this interrupt is very important because if this instruction is in the idle time the other instruction is ready so interrupt will have to facilitate what particular instruction to be processed first and then followed by next and so on and so forth that is the function of an interrupt so an interrupt timeline this shows the timeline of the interrupt okay we have the user processing executing user process executing the input output interrupt processing idle time transferring okay so the IO structure starts control returns to user program only upon the input output completion okay so all of the input output operations return only upon completion of course when you are going to feed instruction using the input output devices then up to the point that you could see the output to your monitor that is an indication that the operation is completed so after the IO starts control return using the program without waiting for IO completion so system call request to the operating system to allow user to wait for IO completion so that is what we call system call it is requesting the operating system allowing user to wait for the completion of input output process, uh, devices to process the instruction then device status, status table contains entry for which IO devices indicating its type address and state the operating system indexes into IO devices table to determine device status and to modify table entry to include the interrupt so this talks about the IO structure storage structure storage we talk about storage uh, we have different storage one is memory or the main memory the uh, large storage media that the CPU can access directly so this talks about your hard disk okay hard disk where where all our uh, data are actually stored into let's say for example our application programs 
our operating systems, our files. That is what you call main memory, right? The secondary storage extension of the main memory that provides large non-volatile storage capacity. Okay, extension of the main memory that provides large non-volatile storage capacity. Those are the secondary storage. Then, magnetic disk. This is a rigid metal or glass platter covered with magnetic recording material. So, these are what you call the storage devices that are being used by the user. So, we have magnetic disk. I know that magnetic disk as of, as of this moment is not uh, actually uh, very fun of use by the end user. What they're using now is the secondary storage. Let's, let's say for example the external drive. We have the flash disk, right? The main memory is our hard disk. Then the storage hierarchy, storage system organized in hierarchy. Storage is actually consideration, consideration uh, are actually based on on the speed, the cost, and volatility. Okay, the speed. How fast is your storage system? when we talk about processing or storing your data the cost how much is the cost of your uh, storage being used okay next is caching caching is actually an action of okay that is coming from the cache c a c h e cache cache memory all right caching is copying of information into faster storage system so the main memory can be viewed as the last cache for secondary storage so that is why our uh, computer system our computer system in order to address the need or in order to have a balance uh, in terms of processing the information as we all know that the processor is processing million times okay faster than our secondary storage that is why there is a cache memory that when the user needs this particular information to be processed from the, the main memory that will be passed to the cache memory okay that will be passed to the cache memory that is in order to accommodate the need of the processor so that the processor will not have most likely an idle time when it comes to processing the instruction okay so we have the storage hierarchy we have here the magnetic tapes this was being used before the optical disk magnetic disk electronic disk we have here the main memory we have the cache then up to the register so the cache the main memory the registers are actually found already inside the system unit okay so caching important principle performed at many levels in a computer hardware operating system and software okay caching information in use copied by or from slower to faster storage temporarily so that is caching from the slower memory will be transferred to faster storage temporarily or faster storage that is to one reason that it would address the need when it comes to the speed of processing by the processor so faster storage cache check first to determine if information is there so cache smaller than storage being cached
so computer system architecture so most system use a single general purpose processor or the PDAs through mainframes we have multi-processor system growing in use and importance it's also known as parallel system tightly coupled system so this system were actually uh, i know that this was actually being introduced to you so there is maybe there is no need to elaborate what is all about parallel system tightly coupled system so the advantage includes increased throughput economy of scale and increased reliability so two types we have asymmetric multiprocessing and symmetric so what's the difference between the two okay how a modem computer works okay so symmetric multiprocessing architecture so we have cpu1 cpu2 cpu3 that is a figure that is showing symmetric multiprocessing so we have different cpus and then we have different registers and the cache and then we have a common memory that shares or store the information before processing and store the information after processing before that will be um, stored in the main memory that is symmetric okay a dual core design so this is this figure talks about uh, the processor the cpu which is called dual core so when you dual when you say dual core that is two cpu when you say quad core that is four cpus <coughs> meaning the more cpu that is responsible for processing the data the faster is expected the completion of instruction okay so meaning it increase the speed of processing the information so cluster system like multiprocessor system but multiple system working together usually a cluster system sharing storage via storage area network okay clustered meaning clustered it is a group of a system clustered together all right provides a high availability system or service which survives failures so asymmetric clustering and symmetric so we all know what is the difference between symmetric and asymmetric okay has one machine in hot standby mode symmetric has multiple nodes running application monitoring each other okay so that is the difference between symmetric and asymmetric now some cluster are for high performance computing application must be written for or to use parallel parallelization So operating system structure talks about the multi-programming needed for the efficiency. Single user cannot keep CPU and I/O devices busy at all times. Okay. So computers today, uh, they are using multi-programming. So it organizes jobs, codes, and data. So CPU always has one to execute. So a subset of total jobs in system is kept in memory so time sharing or multitasking is a logical extension in which cpu switches jobs so frequently that user can interact with each job while it is running okay so we have response time so the response time should be up to one second so that is why there is a time manager in the operating system or in the the processor component we have the clock there that is to manage the time the purpose the purpose of that is to synchronize the process and synchronize the execution from one stage to another okay 
each user has at least one program executing in memory. That is what you call process. Several jobs ready to run at the same time. Okay, all jobs will be placed in a counter. So that is on the CPU side to assign or to schedule according to the instruction counter to schedule on when to process that information. So virtual memory allows execution of process not completely in memory. So when you talk about virtual memory, that is just only a or when you say when you relate that in a program that is what you call an instance object okay an instance object which that object exists only out of the the real object okay so virtual memory is not actually existing it, or it is actually existing but that is based on the physical memory right So this is the layout of multi-program system. So job uh, number one up to job N, and then the operating system. So jobs there, the jobs here, are actually um, labeled. That is through the use of the counter. Okay. So the counter that's responsible for counting and labeling of the instruction to be processed by the processor with the help of the operating system. Okay, we have here the process management. So process management is one part or component of an operating system. So how does this operating system manage the process? A process is a program in execution. It is a unit of work within the system so program is a passive entity and process is an active entity so meaning process actually is uh, expressing action okay process needs resources to accomplish its task so how how the data is being processed but that is through the help of the CPU itself the central processing unit which includes the arithmetic processing or logical processing the memory which is storing the data while it is not yet being processed or after processing then the IO these are the devices which is responsible for feeding instruction or data to the memory and then the files these are the actual files that you are going to open and you are going to manipulate okay then initialization of data process termination requires a reclaim of any reusable resources okay so a single threaded process has one program counter specifying location of the next instruction to execute so process management this is the one who manages all of the processing of instructions into the central processing unit so that is one of the function of the operating system so process management activities operating system is responsible for the following activities in connection with process management so the first one is creating and deleting both user and system process so that is one of the function or the responsibility of the process management suspending so and resuming the process all right the process manager of the operating system has the capacity to suspend and resume the process depending that is depending on the situation so providing mechanisms for process synchronization and providing mechanism for process communication and the last is providing mechanism for deadlock handling so all in all those are the responsibility of the process management memory management all data in memory before and after processing 
will be checked first by the memory manager of the operating system that it will see to it that the data before and after processing has enough memory to accommodate that data so all instruction and the memory in order to execute will be make sure or will make sure that there is enough memory to be allocated in that particular data or instruction so memory management determines what memory what is in the memory when optimizing cpu utilization and computer response to user okay so memory management it talks about the general overview or the, the, the general picture of this memory management is when you are going to open a file or when you are going to save file of course you're going to locate for <coughs> to locate for a storage area so before storing that data or, in, or a file the operating system will have to make sure that there is enough space in that particular memory in order to accommodate the file so try to store videos that the capacity of that video is more than is more than the capacity of your USB stick or USB drive or no 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 your USB stick or flash flash disk okay so in that case operating system will have to inform you oi something is wrong your file will not be stored because of this blah 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 issue so that is memory management so the difference between the physical and virtual memory so we're going to have a differentiation of the physical and virtual memory so physical memory which is the actual RAM is a form of computer data storage that stores the current executing program so physical memory that is our random access memory where all of our instruction will pa will be passing from our main memory that will be passed to the random access memory before it will go to the central processing unit or the cpu so in contrast virtual memory is a memory management techniques that creates an illusion to user of larger physical memory thus this is the main difference between the physical and virtual well actually uh, literally we could uh, know the difference between physical and virtual virtual is it's just sort of an imagination okay you cannot touch as i've said a virtual or that is in programming that is what you call an instance object an instance object of the class an instance object or an instance variable so you, are, you are trying to make an instance object of a variable in order to hold a particular data so memory type while physical memory is an actual memory virtual memory is the logical memory that is the difference between the physical and the virtual speed is another difference between the physical and virtual memory physical memory is faster than the virtual memory of course so technique then the size the cpu so those are these are the illustration of uh, differentiating the actual and the virtual memory storage management OS provides uniform and logical view of information storage so abstracts physical properties to logical storage units or the file each medium is controlled by device like disk drives tape drives so this is quite related to what I am talking a while ago so storage management that's, that makes sure 
that your storage is existing let's say for example you wanted this file to be stored in your uh, flash drives okay so what will happen if your flash drive is not actually connected to your system so the storage management will have to look for that all right so file management system file is really organized into directories so access control of most system to determine who can access what is what os activities includes so creating and deleting files and directories primitive to manipulate files and directories mapping files onto secondary storage and backup files onto a stable storage media so those are the activities of OS that is included so my storage management usually the disk used to store data that does not fit in main memory or data that must be kept for a long period of time so management of mass storage so entire speed of computer operation hinges on this subsystem and its algorithm protection and security so protection talks about any mechanism for controlling access of processes or users to resources defined by the operating system so operating system has these features for protecting what is or what are the necessary protections that will be uh, offered by the operating system that is actually a package in the operating system so security defense of the system against internal and external attacks no? security or the operating system has these features that secures everything the files the operating system itself and the softwares so operating system has this capacity to secure and protect our system so system generally first distinguish among users to determine who can do and what can be do right so computing env environments client server computing so client server meaning we have different nodes we have the buses there okay and then we have the server the server or the different clients or the nodes are actually connected to the server so all of the processes will be at the server especially the storage and the like okay so computer server provides an interface to client to request services like example for database okay so file server provides interface for clients to store and retrieve files these are two different servers that talks about we talk about computer servers let's say you have database here in the server and then we have different computers here and then the processes will be requesting data from the database as a server right so same as true as the file server peer-to-peer -peer computing another model of distributed system which is p2p does not distinguish clients and server so p2p meaning that is connecting one computer to another okay Two computers are being connected instead all nodes are considered peers so may each act as client and both or server or both so meaning if you are going to connect two computers that is what you call peer-to-peer -peer, p2p okay you can share information using that peer-to-peer uh, -peer computing open source operating system so open source meaning this is free an open source an operating system made available in open source format rather than just binary closed source okay counter to the copy protection and digital rights management drm movement 
So free softwares, these are open source, no? Uh, okay, the GPL, the Linux, the Unix, those are examples of an operating system which are considered as an open source. So we are done with the presentation and the discussion of our first topic which is the operating system. We have the different components and other topics which is related to the operating system. So we have here uh, on the assessment part. So first question, why our operating system are viewed as resource allocator? Another is explain what is the bootstrap program where it is stored provide the difference between physical virtual and logical memory okay so you are going to explain that briefly and if possible give an example that is to elaborate your answer next is we have here the identification anyway this question for the assessment will be uh, we will be providing an option for you to answer the assessment part in our LMS. Okay, so I hope that all of you have access to our learning management system, the NORSO LMS, and just open the LMS using your account and then read the instructions and take the examination for this particular topic so i guess everything is clear thank you very much for watching and uh, by the way this video will be uploaded to my youtube channel just visit just sums tv g-e-s-s -S, space s-u-m-s tv then you could see this video so thank you very much everyone god bless us all and stay safe